you know, one of the realities of life that we're not going to escape is that life can be really hard and it's full of hardship and adversity. And how we think about that suffering is really going to make a difference in terms of how we relate to God. And so um, everybody's looking for meaning in suffering and some answer to suffering. Mm -hmm. What are some of the ways that we thought about suffering when we were Mormons? I thought that suffering was something that I had chosen in the pre-existing world. And mm -hmm. so I was a valiant spirit who wanted to become more valiant here. Right. So it was kind of like karma. Okay. That was yeah. one way. That's one way. And I also, on the, fl the flip side of that too, I think people, is like if I was less valiant mm -hmm. in the pre-existence, then I might be born into a situation that wasn't as easy or comfortable. Yeah. I might have been born um, into poverty or something like that, mm -hmm. right? So. So it's karma in reverse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what else? Um, that I'm not being righteous, that I'm not living mm -hmm. righteously, so I'm going to be cursed with suffering. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I'll be happy if I'm living righteously. Right. Things will go um, well for me, and yeah. the circumstances will be convenient or easy, and I'll be prosperous mm -hmm. if I'm living right. Yes. So if I'm suffering, I must not be good enough, righteous enough, or I must have done something God's punishing me for. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you have other thoughts? Yeah. That can be kind of brutal, hmm. right? If that's a pretty heavy burden to say, man, I'm suffering. There's some, there's a lot of things wrong with me maybe. Or, yeah. Um, so that's why it's, I think, really important for us to reconsider suffering. Mm -hmm. Coming out of Mormonism into a biblical faith, that we really reconsider the whole idea of what suffering is about and its meaning and how God uses suffering in our lives. So let me read. Um, in Philippians chapter 1, uh, verse 29. And then mm -hmm. let's talk about some ways that God uses suffering. Okay. For you have been given not only the privilege of trusting in Christ, but also the privilege of suffering for him. Now, what really strikes me there is like, I, I don't tend to think of suffering as a privilege. Right. Uh, trusting in Christ, that's great. But how is suffering a privilege? What, is, what does the Bible mean by that? What's the benefit of it? Or how is it a good thing for us? Well, I think like when I, I've been a Christian for 27 years and it was only over a year ago mm. that that verse has like come again. Yeah, it's really. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I don't, there's no way we can see suffering as a privilege if we have a skewed vision of God. That's a great point. There's mm -hmm. no way. Mm -hmm. our, the most important thing about us is our ideas about God and all its associated images mm -hmm. because that defines how we do this life. And so... Right. Suffering, like the first 10 years after I started walking with the biblical Jesus, I wasn't getting my way. I'd grown up with a very, what I call a linear theology, yeah. where I do A and B and God's supposed to show up and do C. Right. And right. financial security happened to be one of my idols where I went to for comfort and security. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Right. So God wasn't showing up like I wanted. And right. He's supposed to bless you in certain ways to take away the insecurity of Right. Related to money, right? Yeah. yeah. And I was living righteously. I was walking with him obediently. Right. So you got the A and the B and the C's not and happening. It wasn't happening. Right? And what it led to when I didn't see suffering as a privilege, I didn't even have that theology of suffering, was me shaking my fist at God, right. me protesting, me demanding. I couldn't surrender. Mm -hmm. And so that was a huge shifting point for me when I saw, okay, God's my formula, it doesn't really work for God. And yeah, then yeah. I had to get, and it was when I got introduced to this vision of the Trinity as this community of love mm -hmm. who's for me, not yeah. against me, yeah. so for me that they're determined to detach me from all the second, all created things that I've put in first place okay, in my right. soul. Right. Yeah. right, so things that I have said, maybe not verbally or even cognitively but yeah. I, but I've but I've acted like they're really of ultimate importance. Yes. They're really more important than God. I would say that God is most important, but when I in my actions or choices, I'm looking to something else for my identity or I'm looking to someone else something else for my purpose for living, right? Yes, for comfort, yeah. for power, for mm -hmm. approval, yeah. for security. Okay, right. Yeah. Something else besides God for, yes. for all of those elements of life. And yeah. it, all day so, long we're prayed, yeah. plagued by that. Yeah, it's it's built into like the human heart, right? Yes. Um, and so we're calling those second loves yes. as opposed to 
first love. First love, which mm-hmm. is God. Okay, and so. And C.S. Lewis says, if we pursue <laughs> our first thing first, mm-hmm. God, then he throws second things in and we get both. He right. loves to shower us right. with his good creation and his good gifts. Mm-hmm. But if we pursue second things first, we lose both our first thing and our second and thing. And our second thing. So yes. then let's explore how does suffering then have the impact on those second loves? How does God use that to purify that? So suffering is a means by which God can get our attention. I'm not saying God causes the suffering mm-hmm. necessarily, but nothing is wasted in God's kingdom. Mm-hmm. And so for me, it was through this, him not just giving me the candy I wanted, right? the financial security, right. the blessings, really it's wanting the blessing more than the blesser. Right. Um, Good. It began to expose, I do want the blessing more than I want the mm-hmm. blesser. Yeah. I want my security now. I don't want to wait for it. I don't want to wait for his timing. And I certainly don't want what he has in store for my soul in the process. Right, right. And so I'm going to call that detachment. The gift, the, I think one of the, uh, how does the version say in Philippians? Yeah, it talks about we're, we have the, the privilege, the privilege of the suffering. Privilege. Mm-hmm. The privilege is that um, we become, when we lean in and open ourselves to this process, of detaching from our second loves Mm -hmm. and making God our first Mm -hmm. love in the journey of suffering, that's the incredible opportunity. Because when our vision in the garden, before Adam and Eve ate the apple, ate the fruit from tree of knowledge of good and evil, their vision of God was askew. They stopped seeing him as the faithful provider who loves them. And as a result, they took control. Right. And so, Mm -hmm. In suffering, it's that opportunity for our vision of him to be remade. Yeah, because suffering has a way of taking me out of control. I can't control the pain. I can't control the circumstances, whatever, right? So I have to to approach God then in a dependent way now. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay, so so God uses suffering for that. That's a privilege. it helps us to then clarify then who God is, our sense of him. So how does suffering help us to grow in our intimacy with God? So suffering is, is the invitation to release our second loves to God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when we do that, he comes in. And it, through suffering and through waiting, what happens if we open ourselves to it and we don't fill that void in our souls that we're looking to fill with comfort, with power, mm-hmm. with security, with right. whatever it is. Right. It's like the Trinity comes in and they're carving out our souls mm-hmm. in the process to create more space for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the beauty of suffering. If yeah. I open myself to they're expanding my soul right. to create more space for more of them, right. which releases me to live out who they design me to be more, with Mm -hmm. the freedom to love, the peace as I'm yoked more closely to Jesus, they become truly more my first love. And they know I will only be at peace and at rest and live freely and lightly Mm -hmm. when I'm yoked Mm -hmm. to Jesus. Yeah, that's really profound because it's such a, a change, a transformation to think of suffering that suffering proves that God is against me. Yes. That's how we thought about it before. Now we can say that suffering proves that even God is for me. Yes. Right? Because he's yes. doing something far transcendent. Yes. Um, in terms of our relationship with him. Yeah. Yeah. So he's not necessarily the cause of the desolation. Right. But he is so, so for us that he knows I want their soul to be at rest. Right. I want them to be filled to overflowing right. with my love. Right, and he can use every tool yeah. to help us to get there. That's awesome. I hope that's encouraging to you because, you know, somebody once said it, either you're in suffering now or you're just coming out of it or you're about to go into it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's all of us, right? And so hopefully this is a great encouragement to you to see God's working in your life, to see it a different way than you've ever seen it before, to realize that even if you're going through the hardest, hardest things, that God is still for you and he still loves you.